Okay, uh, thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, hello everyone, I'm uh, Yi Cheng Zhu from UC Berkeley. Today I'm very glad to present a new 48 volt to one volt power converter for next generation ultra high power microprocessor in data centers. In this presentation, I will walk you through how I constructed this converter topology and how it operates, and then present a high performance hardware prototype shown on this page, which can source 1,200 amps of current at one volt out of voltage. Microprocessors serve as the engine of data center platforms and the foundation for technical progress in areas such as AI, deep learning, autonomous vehicles, and so on. Recently, as they become more and more computationally powerful, their electric power demands have grown dramatically. For example, in the past decade, the thermal design power of one NVIDIA GPU cards has, uh, uh, has increased by 10 times from 100 watts to 1,000 watts. And just in the past three years alone, the thermal design power has more than doubled. To supply such high power, uh, the um, existing power delivery solution needs to first step down the 48 volt bus voltage to a lower DC bus voltage with an intermediate bus converter, and then go down to the one volt at the point of load with multi-phase voltage regulation modules. As the power levels of microprocessors rapidly grow, this two-stage lateral power delivery architecture becomes more and more non-ideal since the current flowing out of the converters needs to travel a long distance to the processor pins, which leads to a large power distribution network and high I squared R loss. If these power converters can be made sufficiently power dense with a similar footprint to the processor socket, we can place them on the bottom side of the baseboard directly underneath the, the uh, processor socket so that the power converters on the bottom side of the baseboard can deliver the high current through the veers to the processor on the top side, namely the vertical power delivery, which can greatly reduce the PDN size and PDN loss and save the valuable top side area on, on the baseboard for high speed communication and memories. Moreover, by combining the two conversion stages into one single stage, we can effectively reduce the power conversion loss and improve the overall system efficiency. So the goal of this work is to develop a new 48 volt to one volt converter for single stage vertical power delivery that can source ultra and high current with high power density, high efficiency, and fast transient response, right? So to achieve these goals, I constructed a new hybrid switch capacitor converter, which can be viewed as two two-to-one switch cap front ends merged with four series capacitor buck modules through four switching buses. I know this circuit looks quite complex, so now let's uh, walk. Uh, so now, let, so now, let, uh, um, 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 let me walk you through how I derived this topology, how it operates, and why we call it a switching bus converter. Let's start with the schematic join of a two to one switch cap converter. If we open the output terminal, there will be two floating nodes. And for each of these two nodes, let's connect a series capacitor buck module to it. After this combination, we can see there are two switches in series on each of the middle branches. And since none of these branches needs to support bidirectional voltage blocking, and only one switch per branch is needed so that we can remove the other redundant switch. By doing so, we get the topology for one switching bus converter. And in this converter, each series capacitor buck module operates in a two-phase fashion, and there are four groups of inductors operating in four different phases from phase one to phase four. Since the bus voltages VSWA and VSWB always switching between two different voltage levels rather than being DC, we call this type of intermediate bus a switching bus. This is also why we call this converter a switching bus converter. Compared to the DC bus based architecture, which is the most straightforward way of combining two conversion stages, the proposed switching bus based architecture has three main advantages. One, it does not require a large and bulky capacitor to maintain a stiff DC bus voltage. Two, it removes one redundant switch on each switching bus as shown earlier. And three, it achieves complete soft charging for offline capacitors in this topology. Now, as mentioned earlier, 
the two series capacitor buck modules each operate in a two-phase fashion. So we know that phase one and phase two are 180 degree phase shifted so that we can couple the inductors in these two phases together. Similarly, we can couple uh, phase three and phase four as well. To couple more phases together and leverage the benefits of multi-phase coupled inductors, I put two switching bus converters together and phase shift the control signals of the second converter by 90 degrees. As a result, phases one, two, five, six are perfectly four phase interleaved with 90 degree phase shift and phases three, four, seven, eight are four phase interleaved as well. So these two groups of inductors can be combined and implemented as four phase coupled inductors. Finally, we got the proposed topology which comprises four series capacitor buck modules, four switching buses, and multiple four phase coupled inductors. To validate the proposed topology and the switching bus based architecture, I built a hardware prototype shown on this page. And today I also bring a mechanical sample here. So please take a look uh, up and, and after this presentation if you are interested. Uh, in this picture, we can see that from the top side, um, we can tell that this converter comprises two 2 to one switch cap front ends and four series capacitor buck modules. To achieve the best performance, we customized a four-phase coupled inductor for this prototype as shown on this page and also designed a hybrid gate drive circuitry for this topology to overcome the accumulative voltage drops across the bootstrap dials, which is implemented as the green dot boards shown here. We tested this prototype up to 1,200 amps out of a current. At this full load current and with uh, fan cooling only, the maximum temperature on the board is less than 70 degrees C, showing the good thermal performance of this prototype. At one volt out of voltage, the prototype achieves 92.4% peak system efficiency, 87.5% full load system efficiency, and 607 watt per cubic inch power density, with the loss and volume of the gate drive circuitry included in the efficiency and the power density calculation. Um, as shown on the left hand side, to compare the performance of this work to the state of the art, I plotted the full load system efficiency and the power density of different academic works as different dots, with their colors showing the maximum out of current. A red dot represents a converter capable of sourcing higher current. We want the converter to achieve both higher efficiency and higher power density. So the goal is to push the performance boundary to the upper right corner. Compared to the state of the art, this work achieves 1.5 times higher power density and reduces the full load power loss by 13% with an output current of 1,200 amps, which is 2.4 times higher than the best uh, existing work. Currently, we are working in collaboration with NVIDIA on a new hardware prototype for their next generation GPU accelerated computing platform, um, which will have a better form factor for vertical power delivery and achieve faster transient response with advanced control techniques and, uh, coupling, uh, and the coupled magnetics. In summary, in this work, we developed a switching bus converter for 48 volts to one volt power conversion based on the switching bus architecture. We built a hardware prototype with custom four-phase coupled inductors and gate drive data boards, which was capable of sourcing 1,200 amps of current at one volt out of voltage and achieved excellent efficiency and power density. Finally, I'd like to thank Infineon for, pro for, pro for um, providing us with the low voltage device samples used in this hardware prototype and the NVIDIA Graduate Fellowship for supporting my PhD research and the Berkeley Power and Energy Center. Thank you for listening and I'm glad to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Excellent, we have a question. Hi, good morning, excellent mm -hmm. presentation. Thank you. Uh, just curious, what's uh, power density uh, compared to state of the art? Yeah, so. solution. Uh, let me go back to my presentation slides. Oops. Okay. 
So here in this plot, uh, we are showing the full load system efficiency and power density of different works in this plot, right? So you can see that how the, the uh, horizontal axis okay, okay. shows the it still, uh, shows the full load efficiency, and the vertical axis shows the power density. All right. Also, yeah. uh, real quick, uh, have you done any transient uh, testing on your solution? Yeah. So for this prototype, we haven't done any transient test yet. Okay. But for the next prototype, we are uh, working in collaboration with Nvidia, and we are targeting for a transient process, uh, which is faster than one amp per nanosecond. Yeah. Yeah. OK, and thank they, you. And, and, and they have a specification on what's the, the overshoot voltage. and the undershoot on the outer voltage. OK, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Time for a couple more questions for Yi Cheng. Yes, yeah. So the prototype I'm presenting in this presentation uh, operates at 200 kilohertz uh, because when we first designed this prototype, we do not have a target for the transient performance yet. So we just uh, aim for high power density and high efficiency. But for the next prototype, the switching frequency will be uh, higher than uh, 600 kilohertz because we do have a, uh, we do have a limitation on the, on the transient performance. Um, and we are using silicon MOSFET here because we know that for voltage below 50 volts, uh, silicon MOSFETs uh, has better performance than GAN transistors, especially for high current applications because silicon MOSFETs has low RDS on compared to GAN transistors for the current technology. Yeah. Okay, so one more question too. When you talk about power density, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so at what you, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is a very good question. Right now, when we report the power density, we only report the box volume of the whole solution, including the power stage and the gate drive circuitry, but we do not include, for example, the, the volume of, uh, uh, of the fan, and also we do not have a heat sink here. Okay. And so if we make a real product, I, I think the real volume will be larger. But also, uh, here we are not using any uh, any um, advanced packaging technique. So I would also uh, assume that if we can make it to be a real commercial product, we can do better in packaging. So maybe it will offset the increase in the volume a little bit. And your assumed ambient is what, 25? 25, yeah, 25 degrees. Thank you. So I'm curious, uh, you mentioned that you have a mm -hmm. using a code plate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Th uh, thank you for the question. Uh, can you repeat the question so everyone can hear? Yeah. So the question is about: uh, Are we thinking about of using any liquid uh, cooling solutions for this prototype? And this is a good question. Uh, in fact, we are thinking of developing a code plate for this prototype because uh, from this from this picture, if I bring out my laser pointer here. Um, we can see this black, uh, this uh, black on, on squares. They are the power MOSFETs. Uh, they are much thinner than the flying capacitors and the coupling inductors. So meaning that there is quite a large uh, space above them. So our idea is that we can design a cold plate that fit the shape of the the switches, and so we can put them on the top of the switches and to cool the power MOSFETs, which is the main source of the heat. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, so actively balance the capacitor voltages? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so the answer is no. And the reason is that um, for this type of uh, switch cap topology, they have uh, automatic uh, balancing uh, ma uh, mechanism in, uh, inside there. Uh, if you have worked, on the series capacitor buck topology, you, you will know that the series capacitor buck topology can automatically balance its inductor currents and also the flying capacitor voltages. Um, so the only question here is that whether the voltage uh, on the flying capacitor in the first stage will be balanced or not. Uh, and uh, here, a short answer is that this uh, flying capacitor in the first stage share the same balancing mechanism of the series capacitor buck topology. 
And uh, if the capacitor voltage deviates from its uh, nominal value, then there will be a negative feedback mechanism to bring it back to its, up, uh, to its nominal value. So we do not need any active control to balance the flying capacitor voltages and the inductor currents. Excellent. Any more questions? All right. Let's thank you for uh, Yicheng. Great. Thank you.